Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video we got a couple of very, very interesting topics and updates, but as you can see, first we're gonna talk about Hunter Labrada a little bit, and I'm sure all you guys know already that he won that Tampa Pro Show, he won it rather easily, nobody could really challenge him at this show, I mean he really brought his absolute best package, look at this, look at this shot. Look at the separation in the in the in the, in the lower back in the back as well. Like I don't think he was. I, I'm sure he was never this dry through the back, especially and just like everywhere. I mean, he never had these kind of details, this kind of conditioning, and also he wasn't flat, not even one bit. Like he was really full, really conditioned, absolute best package of Hunter Labrada. And the thing with Hunter is also like you can't see how big he is when he's standing alone and doing his posing routine. You gotta see him compared to the other guys. And even though Andrew Jack is like, you know, a really big guy with really big frame, I think Hunter can compare against him uh, size wise. I think he's that big. I think he's that wide and like he has that big of a frame. He's not as tall as Andrew Jack, but he definitely packs a lot of muscle on that frame. His head is a little bit bigger and it looks disproportionate. It makes his body look smaller when he's alone, but in comparison next to the other bodybuilders, you can see how big he is and he is very big. Now, the big question that everybody is wondering is whether Hunter is even gonna do that Texas Pro or not. I mean, he just won Tampa, he got his Mr. Olympia qualification. Why would he risk his stock now that it is on probably like all time highest? Maybe it was higher when he placed fourth at the Mr. Olympia, but now he came back, you know, he came back and he looked better than ever. He improved a lot, he brought the best conditioning of his life. He wasn't in this conditioning, he wasn't in this shape when he was for the Mr. Olympia. This is a better package. So now his stock is very, very high, and he's gonna go, he should, he, he's supposed to go against freaking Andrew Jacked, who was third at the Arnold Classic, who won Texas last year, who is six foot two, who is enormously big, who is genetically blessed like, like crazy, who is working with Chris Asito now for the second show, who is probably gonna look incredible at this show, Texas Pro, and he's also going against one of the most massive, probably the freakiest bodybuilders of today, who never competed as a pro, yeah, but he's incredible right now, Carlos Thomas Jr., so Hunter is supposed to go against these two guys, I mean, if he goes to the Mr. Olympia with this stock that he has right now, winning the Tampa Pro and bringing his best conditioning and overall package of all time, you know, it might mean something, it might put him ahead of some guys, I don't know, maybe it's gonna affect the judges, but if he goes against these guys, and if he loses, which is a possibility, it's not in the bag, not yet, I mean, Andrew Jack is incredible, and Carlos Thomas Jr. is promising a lot, if he loses, if he plays his second or even third, which is not impossible, I think anything can happen at this show at Texas, it's gonna hurt him, I'm sure it's gonna hurt him, so if he does Texas, it's a big risk, it's a bold move, if he doesn't do it, everybody's gonna call him out and say that he was scared uh, of these two guys, so you know, it's a tricky situation, but it seems like Hunter already made a decision. So pretty much right after he won Tampa, he posted this on his story, he says, let's get this out of the way real quick, I will be seeing everyone in Texas in two weeks. So yeah, Hunter is gonna be doing Texas. Once again, risky move, but hey, maybe he's just that confident, maybe he truly believes that he will win Texas no matter what, no matter who shows up, I mean, he is from Texas, he also probably wants the experience of doing the Texas Pro, you know, having his own crowd cheering for him, everybody is saying that Texas is like a really good show and, you know, it's very competitive as well this year, so yeah, he probably just wants to prove himself once again, yeah, he has much to lose, but he has much to gain as well if he wins. So, I wish him good luck, we'll see how he's gonna do. But you guys make sure to let me know down below in the comment section what do you think who's gonna win that Texas Pro. But as far as Hunter's physique, like, there aren't many flaws that I can point to. He's very complete, well-rounded, he was in best conditioning of his life, he improved his physique a ton, but there is one thing that I gotta criticize him for, and that's his midsection. I don't know what he did to it, but he kind of messed it up, I mean, look at this, I mean, he's doing abs and ties here, and he seems like he can't even flex those abs, especially the lower abs, what the hell is going on here, I mean, how, how does this even happen, I have no idea, 
I never see this happen in classic physique. It only happens in open bodybuilding. I would like to hear some explanation why this happens. I mean, are these guys not training their abs or whatever it is? I don't know. Like, he can't even flex. He can't even contract those abs. And he tried to do a vacuum. It also didn't look very good on stage. Look at the stomach here. I mean, not very good, right? I mean, it is kind of a vacuum, I guess. An attempt of a vacuum. I, I applaud for the attempt. But was it a successful attempt? I wouldn't say so. I mean, you know, you can see that he's trying to pull the stomach in, but it just m looks weird. I mean, the rib cage is kind of wide, like the waist size is, is, is wide and weird. Uh, I don't know, man. It just looks off. I don't like what I'm seeing here, to be honest. I mean, much improved physique in every sense, but that. Maybe, maybe this is like an assumption, a wild guess, but maybe it's because before he was drinking uh, like a lot of shakes, you know, he was, uh, he was having like, I don't know, a way isolated in four of his six meals, and maybe that kept his stomach, his meat section in check, and now that he's eating a lot more, you know, food that is harder to digest, like a lot more meat, maybe that blew out his stomach a little bit. Also, once again, he's in the best conditioning of his life ever and he's not any smaller than he was ever before which means he probably gained some muscle and with gained muscle he maybe grew his stomach a little bit more so yeah if i'm being honest i didn't like his midsection what it looked like on stage here you can see what he posted on his story he says that he's very proud of this of being able to pull a vacuum and you can see right here that this is this looks like a really good vacuum like it's very deep i don't think it was this deep on stage Maybe he was tired, maybe he had too much food to carb up, I have no idea, but it didn't look this, this good on stage. And from the front also, it doesn't look that good. So maybe he should find another way of posing with his stomach, but like that's the only thing that I can criticize him for, everything else was just pot on. Uh, I wish him all the luck, Texas, do I think he's gonna win? You know, that's definitely a tough question to answer. I'll give you my answer when I see what Andrew looks like, but yeah, it's gonna be very, very interesting, that's for sure. Whatever you guys think gonna happen, tell me down below in the comment section. Alright, the next thing is very, very interesting. We finally got an opportunity to see Jay Cutler on stage since he retired. And look at him, at the age of 50... He looks amazing, guys. I mean, he did this transformation for his birthday, for his 50th birthday, and he really got freaking lean and he got some muscle back. And considering that he has been retired since 2013, damn, he looks good. And he's standing here next to one of the top open guys, Regan Grimes. And he's not even being dwarfed, not really. So yeah, huge respect for doing this with Regan, not doing it alone, and still looking freaking amazing, I mean, look at his abs, look at the conditioning, I mean, he got so jacked so easily, I mean, when you have these kind of genetics like these guys, you always have them, even when you are 50, and Jay doesn't have that many injuries, his body is still looking fresh, I mean, he messed up that bicep, and like, uh, not everything is just there, I mean, like, his shoulders are completely gone, like, he doesn't have that crazy roundness that he was known for, really, and his quads also were one of his best body parts, and he lost that sweep a little, but, like, chest, abs, overall muscularity, the conditioning in the quads and the hamstrings as well, everything is there, you know, his back also is looking pretty good, we all saw all those physique updates, so, yeah, I'm really amazed with how good Jay looks on this stage right here next to Regan. Another thing is Jay was always known, I mean, his biggest weakness was his waist size, like, he, he had, like, really wide waist genetically, structurally, and Regan is one of those guys with the smallest waist in the open division, and Jay stood next to him, and in the front double, he taper looks good, as you can see, it looks very good, you know, usually with age, uh, as you just lose your limbs, you lose the size of your arms and your lats as well, uh, the waist starts to look even bigger than it was when you were younger, but once again, Jay's looking good in, in the front double, the waist size is, is good, it's fine, it's not like as bad as you would expect from somebody who was criticized basically only for having a little bit wider waist, that was 
basically his own his only flaw when he was competing i mean it wasn't much of a flaw everything else was pretty much perfect and, and like how big his shoulders were it didn't matter really but once again you would expect his waist to be even bigger than it was i was honestly amazed when i saw how small his waist is in the front double especially and how well he is he's compared <laughs> to regan grimes i'm um, honestly like i didn't expect i wouldn't expect this i mean i thought he was gonna look like a classic guy or something like that that size but no i mean jay still has the size and as you can see he's very very lean he's probably in better condition than regan who is competing in a couple of weeks so yeah like this is this is really good i, I was really amazed when i saw this guy's posing right here look at his conditioning look at look at the skin in his stomach like there is no body fat left i mean there is zero fat there and and look at the legs like they're very very conditioned chest as well so he's very extremely lean and now as far as regan grimes let's take a look at his physique i mean he's competing soon uh, again conditioning i guess it's fine for this point i'm sure milos will pick him right milos will get him conditioned enough and, and like big enough full enough and everything that it takes for him to be at his absolute best uh, as much as he can you know from this point I think he could have had a more productive offseason if he was willing to push things a little bit harder. But from what they got, I'm sure Milos will get maximum out of Regan Grimes. Uh, does he look good right now, right here? Yeah, he looks good, but uh, I don't think he looks any different than ever before. Regan also posted this, uh, this posing video from behind. So, like, considering how lean his glutes and his hamstrings are and his lower back yeah he will be ready in time for sure i was worried about his conditioning but i'm not anymore it looks good it definitely looks good uh, once again did he improve yeah i doubt that i don't see any crazy improvements maybe like uh, when i saw that first physique update i thought his chest and his and his shoulders are bigger fuller but i guess it was in fact just a really good pump probably a lot of carbs and good lighting and as he gets more conditioned for the stage uh, he's gonna lose that fullness that he had in those shoulders and arms and chest uh, as you can see in the physique updates he, he's starting to to lose that fullness so of course he's depleted now he's not gonna look super full but once again do i see the changes that i want to see from regan guys i'm criticizing this guy because i know he can be like top six material or even better than that on the mr olympia stage top six in the world I'm sure all of you can see that as well. I mean, he's gonna do great. I guess he's gonna qualify with Mr. Olympia. He's gonna be there. He's probably gonna win a pro show. But is he gonna be one of the top guys? Is he gonna battle for the Mr. Olympia title? No, no. He's been looking pretty much the same for the past, I don't know how many years. I just wanna see this guy fulfill his maximum potential. Maybe he doesn't care that much about bodybuilding. Maybe he wants to make money, enjoy competing, being one of the top 20 guys in the world. That's amazing, that's, that's crazy, that's crazy success. I am aware of how good he is, what success he accomplished, it's amazing, I would trade places with him in a, a heartbeat, that's not a question, I'm talking here about his maximum potential, and is he fulfilling it this year? No, no, even though he took a year off, an entire off season, I thought he was gonna, you know, get much bigger, get like the size of Samson Dowder, something like that, it didn't happen. Um, I don't think he's I, I don't know what the hell he's doing maybe he's maybe his body just doesn't want to grow maybe he's pushing it and it's not working but the impression that I get is that he's simply not all out he's not 100% committed he's not living in a box like Jay used to say back when he was competitive like he's not that much tunnel vision he's focused on his relationships on his business uh, on living the life as he says as well that's fine that's all great but me as a bodybuilding fan i don't like that i want to see him at his 110 percent that's what i want to see and until i see that i'm gonna criticize him i have to that that's my job basically so whatever you guys think though tell me down below in the comment section but tell me what you guys think is he gonna be able to win europa pro i mean he has good veto and also nathan the ash is coming back what's that gonna look like i wonder i don't know we'll see it's gonna be definitely an interesting show whatever you guys think tell me down below and lastly we got a little physique update of nick walker not just this photo he also posted his regular photos in the in the in the in the bodybuilding poses under that same lighting same spot everything but i thought this one was interesting because here he's trying to show us what his waist 
is looking like because just like with Jay Cutler, that's the only thing that you can criticize Nick for. Also, you could say his his quads, like the, the the sweep on his quads and just overall structure. But the main problem that he might have on stage is his waist size. If he blows it out a little bit too much, uh, based on this physique update, I gotta say it looks good. I gotta say it looks good. And I love the fact that he's trying to show to us that it is under control. Because that means that he's aware of it. That he's, that he's paying attention to it. You know, back in the, like, I don't know, early 2000s, nobody cared about uh, having a bubble gut. It wasn't really criticized enough. It wasn't, people weren't penalized for it. So nobody cared about it. Nobody paid attention to the stomach. Nobody trained their abs. Nobody did vacuums or learned how to control the stomach on stage. Now it is completely different. And if you want to be the best of the best, you got to pay attention to that as well. And Nick, I think he's really paying a lot of attention to it. And I think that's what makes him such a great bodybuilder, being so complete, paying attention to every single detail. And here, as you can see, it looks good. Once again, it looks good. I mean, for him, for, for his structure, when he stands like this, in this pose, in, the, in this mirror, in, in, in this under this lighting, in his gym, it looks good. It's going to look the same on stage. I don't know. It's probably not. It's not going to be the same angle from, I mean, from the judge's perspective. But I think it's very important that he keeps trying to keep it under control. As far as the physique update, like the, the regular one, as you can see, he looks great for sure. Like he looks really big and full and really conditioned for this size. Waist is looking good here. I hope he's not going to do the front double like this. Yeah, I know his waist looks smaller when he stretches the abs like this. But his structure is like his second biggest problem. I mean, his legs are too short for his upper body. You know, it's not very, very pleasing aesthetically. His proportions, you know, upper body to lower body ratio is not very good. And when he stretches the abs like this, he prolongates his torso even more. And it looks, you know, much, much longer than it should be compared to the legs. So this, I don't like it because of that. But when he flexes his abs, he makes his torso look shorter compared to the legs. And also he shows crazy development in the abs. He shows those blocky... Those, those, those massive abs, and, um, you know, maybe his waist looks a little bit wider when he does that, but I think overall, it just flows better, he's not gonna have a small waist on stage, no matter what, so I think he should show what his strengths are, and that is, he's really developed, really, uh, you know, blocky abs, and, you know, try and shorten that torso as much as possible, so his proportions look better, but, you know, overall, like, muscularity and conditioning for this point in prep, it's all looking amazing, he's gonna look crazy on that Mr. Olympia stage, you know, it's gonna be tough for anybody to challenge him uh, in muscularity department, and, you know, he might very well win the Mr. Olympia, it's not impossible, I have him in my possible prediction for the Mr. Olympia winner, we'll see what's gonna happen, it's gonna be a very interesting year, anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to the channel, and also, guys, if you wanna support me in this channel, you can do that simply by buying any of the old school lab supplements you like. The link is down below, but make sure to use the code EVAN, and that will help me out, and you're gonna get a 15% discount. I suggest to you Vintage Brown, whichever taste you guys prefer, try it, I promise you, you're gonna love it. Everything tastes amazing, it's super high quality, so guys, if you wanna try it, once again, the link is down below, use the code EVAN for a 15% discount. Thank you guys so much, all the best, and bye-bye.